Welcome back. Here's the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time for Off the Press is a time where we take you through the pages of the national dailies, I mean, the newspaper review, and uh, check out some of the top stories on African pages. We do have, uh, I guess, joining us this morning, uh, GD Johnson. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, Messi, and then good morning, Justin. Good, good morning, morning, JJ. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning on Friday. And as always, our focus would be on the top captioned. On the leadership, the APC convention consensus deal shaky. 24 hours after President Mohamed Buhari's meeting with aspirant. And that's the bold caption for uh, the leadership this morning. Al Makura Mustafa invokes section 82, subsection 3, section 84, subsection 9 of the Electoral Act stipulating written consent of all aspirant to seal consensus. I find this very interesting because uh, yesterday when we were talking, uh, you know, with one of our analysts, we talked about the issue of having uh, people to agree. If you're talking about the consensus, because the, for the APC, uh, they're saying, oh, yes, uh, the APC is taking, you know, they're opting uh, towards <clears throat> what the, you know the consensus candidate mm -hmm. for uh, you know the candidate that the president had actually put out yes. so they would go for the option of consensus candidate but we understand what this part of the section talks about and so now it is what we're talking about is there an agreement at the end of this so you have those who don't feel very comfortable with this uh, looking at the electoral act that stipulates a written consent of all aspirant to seal the consensus and the section 82 subsection 3 section 84 subsection 9 of the electoral act stipulates that uh, let's going to go on that's what some people are, uh, you know, uh, putting out there. President Mohamed Buhari hosts APC founding fathers and lobby lawmakers once again squabbles. These are the riders underneath the bold caption. Again, we have zoning tradition in PDP. IU is quoted to say uh, zoning tradition in PDP or B, that's Peter B, joins presidential race under the People's Democratic Party. Fuel crisis, Distributors Ipman resolved to end tanker driver's strike. And that's uh, also another one uh, amidst the issue of fuel scarcity and all of the hiccups that we're facing at the time. It's time for drastic action to save Nigeria. Uh, former governor of Lagos State, Asiwajo Bola Akma Tinubu, is quoted to say, I can, I can clear federal government's $97 billion debt in 12 months uh, Sam Zuga is quoted on that one. Uh, let's see how he does that. I'm sure that you know it would be an idea that a lot of people will embrace. But this is some of the headlines uh, that we can take on the leadership. Away from the leadership, uh, was lighter next to the Daily Trust uh, newspaper this morning. The lead caption there: North South in epic battle over presidential ticket. We care fueling agitation for Southern presidency will reach out to other aspirants, Saraki Tambo, Mohammed. IU urges aspirants to accept zoning committee's decision, open contest best option. Those are the writers underneath that caption there. Other stories are just below the masthead. I'm not aware of consensus president should campaign for his candidate. That's according to the governor of AKT State, Fayemi. Buhari hosts Tinubu Akonde and Mechi others to dinner. Also on the Daily Trust newspaper, a fresh controversy of a new Lagos airport terminal. Nigerian army commences selection process for short service. We are confused by court's orders on Ebony governor's defection uh, that's attributed to INEC. And just below the pictorial there, how troops destroyed 49 illegal refineries in Delta State. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Away from the Daily Trust, we take a quick look at the Punch newspaper and APC convention, Buhari battles last minute crisis, summons governors, chairmanship, aspirants, fail to agree. I take that again. Buhari 
battles last minute crisis, summoned governors and chairmanship aspirants failed to agree. Uh, just uh, how many more days before that election? It's on the 26th. Uh, okay, so today's the 25th, so you have just a day to go. Let's see how it pans out for the APC. Tunubu ex-governor Hakonde meets president in Vila over Omosharia's choice as secretary. Ruling party bars political appointees from Saturday's national convention. This is what's dominating the papers this morning. And just before we move away, 12,977 children among 207,977 tuberculosis cases recorded in 2021. This is according to the federal government. Yesterday uh, was World Tub uh, Tuberculosis Day. Really, really sad. I mean, if you look at the, you know, the statistics, the children, about 12,977. Yeah. Uh, one would not think that you know, uh, children would be prone to this. This IG distributes 257, uh, 253 trucks, APC, other vehicles, uniform uh, to formation. IG distributes 253 trucks, APC, other vehicles, and uniform for formation. That's what you find. And Fashola reinstates second Niger Bridge 2022 completion date, blames IPOP. Okay? And uh, just before we move away, suspected quarters invited gang member to rape 22-year-old lover. That's what the police is saying right here. A very, very sad story this morning. And capital importation suffers 300, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, capital importation suffers 30% decline, records $6.7 billion, and CDS silver orders vow to crush oil thieves. Lament crushing uh, revenue. Ayum Tambuwal Bauchi governor picks presidential form consult uh, on consensus. IOC's fear collapse as I federal government says 1.36 trillion are accrued stolen in 14 months. These are the headlines on the Punch newspaper this morning. And finally, we reviewed the Nation newspaper. Convention, uh, why we chose consensus option by APC, that's the lead story on the nation, party to abide by electoral act, president solicits unity among party stakeholders. Above the masthead, Ibrahim ordered to publish court records against Amcon MD, rep section 84 subsection 12 remains part of Electoral Act, uh, Reps is saying that Section 84, Subsection 12 remains part of Electoral Act. Race for PDP ticket, Saraki, Tambo, or Mohammed, Meet, Atiku, Anim, others on likely consensus. OB joins race, more aspirants peak nomination forms. All right, let's see if there are more stories we can take uh, just before we bring uh, G.D. Johnson on. Uh, $3.27 billion crude oil stolen in 14 months, uh, still on the Nation newspaper. And uh, on the red strip on the bottom of the page, uh, over 9.7 million pupils at the risk. Obia now regained freedom, passport seized. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper this Friday morning. Well, we do have G.D. Johnson on standby who joins the conversation. Uh, once again, good morning and thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. It's a pleasure to be with you and good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. So um, let's leave it open to you without mm -hmm. asking you which of, uh, I mean, asking you specifics, but which of the headlines interest you as we went through the pages well, of the National Dailies? Well, let, let's start with uh, the APC National Convention, which is less than 24 hours away. And then um, we see the battle for the soul of the party, like we have said over time, that as the 2023 um, nomination terms, primaries are approaching, the stakes are becoming higher, and it might likely become pretty difficult for APC to house in order with respect to uh, over postponing its national convention. You can see that uh, there's one of the headlines that said 24 hours after the president met all aspirants, the deal is still shaking and um, arrangement cannot be written. And then the chairman 
of the, the former chairman of the APC, the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, who happens to be the governor of Ikiti State, said that he's not aware of any consensus arrangement, that the president should should campaign for his for his candidate. We also saw in one of the headlines that the president hosted the founding fathers, invited them to a dinner. But one of the things that I, I, I picked up from the political landscape since 1999 is that when Obasanjo invites you to Asuro or he comes to your house to eat dinner with you as the national chairman of of, of PDP then, your fate is sealed. And so when the president invites you to come and to come and eat dinner with him, I don't know what the, the arrangement is in APC. But it should be cause for concern for everybody that um, we are seeing this kind of crisis bedeviling the parties. Now, if this type of crisis bedevils the party, when they get to government, the government go to the PDP. Even if you over zone or no zone agreement, Mohammed or Bata Imam and Ubi has declared his intention to run. And the president and the chairman of the party, your child is telling them to respect the zoning arrangement that whatever arrangement that is put in place should be should be respected. You see that there's a lot of heat in the in the polity. We hope the political class can come together and put their their house their house in order. For example, there's another story which talked about some of the aspirants in the APC saying that um, the section 82 and section 84 of the electoral act, which requires consensual arrangement for all for all aspirants to have a written agreement, must be adapted to for them to, to go. But politics has been what it is. I am sure there is a lot of us trading. There is a lot of us trading going on when you see people raising their heads, throwing their and raising tantrum and saying no, we are not aware of any development. It's just for them to get their stakes, and then um, at the end of the day, what you are going to have is going to be a coronation. It's going to be give, give and take. One thing that is very, also very, very funny to me is the emergence of Yola Wishori as the as the APC as the APC preferred national secretary from the southwest. I, I, I just want uh, the people that are presenting Omishori. Let me go down the memory lane. Umishuri was the deputy governor to Baba Kondi. When Akonde, Chibisi Akonde, when Chibisi Akonde was the governor of Oshun State, 1999 to 2003, Yola Umishuri was the deputy governor to Akonde. And then there was a fallout. And that fallout, Umishuri was labeled all manners of name. He was labeled as a murderer, as the person that was involved in the death of Chibola Iki. And then he won his election was in detention, was in election as a senator in, in, in prison then. These people that annihilated Omishuri then are the same people promoting him. If you are a young man and you are listening and you are just joining politics, be careful of who you fight with on behalf of the Nigerian political class. They are just the same. If you if anyone had told you fifteen years ago, five years ago, three years ago that that Ashwajibola met in Umbu and Baba Konde would be advancing the candidature of the Yolo Mishuri. You, you say it's not possible, they should take it to the Marine. In but Nigeria, there's no political Gide 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 this, this does this not bring us, you know, to the issue of, you know, the political parties that we have? The, the fact that you, this is where you talk about the fundamentals of democracy. And so if you don't have it right at this point, then it means it, it might necessarily not be right, even if you have a political party trickling down. And so uh, the issue of ideology, having political parties, having an ideology where they stand for, what they stand for. And also, would all of this not also mean that being that the APC came into power uh, in 2015 as a result of, you know, combination of various political parties, and so you would still have different political parties with different interests or ideology coming together and that might just be the reason for all of this uh, uh, clash that you have and projecting some persons like you have questioned the character of some persons that have been questioned for some position at the national level of the party I, i'm not questioning the character i'm just questioning i'm I, I'm, I'm highlighting the arrangement of people that were at cross political purposes coming together uh, people 
that um, in the southwest of the southwest that have been characterized as 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 political. Uh, I don't know what what to use for it, but that's 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 just it. For for almost seven years, the APC has been a political party. It should have been able to harmonize itself, build a consensus, and have a common thought. You should be talking about. The founding fathers and non-founding fathers in the APC today, because having been in, having been formed in 2013 and, and, and in 2015, it got it got it got elected at the national level and won most of the state and the national assembly since 2015 to date. The APC has been controlling most states, they have been controlling and then most of the national assembly and the presidency. We thought that you should have been able to harmonize their thoughts. But my own take is just to, to educate people out there that then um, don't just don't just fall prey to all their political shenanigans. When they are fighting among themselves, they know how to reconcile themselves. I've said it over and over time again. There's no difference between PDP and APC. There's no difference in the Nigerian political class. The Nigerian political class don't care about you. They are not leaders, they are dealers. They engage in things on how to secure and win power. So if it means talking to their arch enemy for them to win election, they will use their arch enemy. Now, I can tell you for a fact, as, as, as a strategist and as a communication expert, the reason why they are advancing the candidature of Omishuri, for example, as a national secretary, because he's a grassroots politician. He's, he's a tough dude. He's not someone you can take for a ride. They needed to have someone that has a voice and that has the force of personality to represent their own interest in the formation of the National Executive Committee and the National Working Committee of APC. So if they control the chairman, they have the secretary to themselves, and they are. So it is, it is political expediency that has made them to use them. So that's just, that's just it. However, if we go into, into the moral ground, the moral basis, and the politics we have played in the Southwest, and that they have played in the Southwest, and the enmity they have created in families, and the bad blood they have sold, over the characterization of some characters that are coming together, then you understand what I'm talking about. And like you pointed All right. out, if something is wrong with it, if something is wrong with the party, something will be wrong with public governance. Because the basis, the foundation for public governance is the political party. Whether PDP or APC, the parties are in shambles. Let's talk about the PDP too for one moment uh, as the Daily Trust has captioned it. It's as though, uh, I mean, they're, they're both in troubled waters as it were, because uh, they are seemingly the two, you know, prominent parties in the country. From what Daily Trust has captioned, North, South in epic battle over presidential ticket. Would you think uh, that this issue of zoning might be the um, undoing of the People's Democratic Party as they had to pose in 2023? The PDP had a consensus argument in picking you. The national chairman, there's a tradition, like how you said, you listen to the chairman that they have a tradition in picking, in zoning their president. Now, in, in, for the national, when, when the national chairman goes to the north, the president comes to the south. That has been the arrangement of, that has been the arrangement of PDP. And that's also the arrangement that APC borrowed from. Because there's no difference between PDP and APC. The actors and players today, in PDP today, were the actors and players in, in APC in 2014, 2015. Tambual, Tambual, um, Atiku, Saraki, all picked presidential form of APC. They all picked presidential, all of these actors are now, are, now, are now in PDP. So you now tell me, what's the difference between the PDP of 2022 and the APC of 2014? A year before the presidential election in 2014, uh, 2015, and a year before. So the that's the arrangement. But as the national chairman, I'm sure Ayo will want the party to be successful in, in the polls, and I want a crisis-free uh, arrangement. But like I've said, there's nothing, there's no difference. The two parties are, can't put their house in order. I ask you this question. We are faced with the devil and the deep pussy. What are the choices before Nigeria? If you look across the coastline, of PDP and look across the shoreline of APC in terms of those aspiring to be president. It is the same set of people that have been part and parcel of public administration in Nigeria. And none of the aspirants has come up with any policy or programs on how to transform this country for good.
Okay, so um, let's quickly look at this as we coast it down. It's on the Punch newspaper. It talks about uh, Fashola reinstating the second Niger Bridge 2022 completion uh, date and blaming the fact that all of this has not been completed due to IPOP. Well, um, I remember when Fashola gave um, a speech at um, Dinobus Kolokom when he was still governor, I think. Uh, a year before the expiration of his tenure, and when he said that um, all the people managing the economy in in, in Nigeria, then they call them the bad players, the bad players, and they all clapped and they all laughed. And he has been given opportunity. I'm not sure there's any minister of works that was minister of works for seven years. At the end of the day, this court card of Ashola will be brought before the public, and then uh, history will put him in the rightful place he belongs to because he used to condemn a lot of actors and players at the national level when he was governor of the state. But from experience and from what you have seen, he has demonstrated that, he's, in fact, he's a bad player, actually. He's a bad player himself because uh, he's been giving excuses left, right, left, right, and center with respect to... He talked about power, that any serious government that did not provide power for, for six months does not know what he's doing. He was there for minister of power for, 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 for four years. There was nothing that came out of it. So I don't reckon with, uh, with, with, such, with such character. Characters that will come on the that, that that will use every opportunity to advance a position because they are not in position of power. And when they get to position of power, they start giving excuses. In fact, his own his own tenor, um, who evaluate it, don't let me see anything now, so that I'm, I'm a bit biased. Who evaluate his tenor at the expiration of it. He's coming back home. When they come back home, I will say to his face, if he is indeed a bad creator or those that were there were at the national level. When he was governor of Lagos State, whether they are the bad player or is bad player 2.0. But but how but how did but how did the activities okay. of IPOP or how did IPOP affect the completion of the uh, you know the second? He's night? giving excuses. He's giving excuses. That's what I'm saying. He's giving excuses. And why 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 should people take the excuses? Even that the activities you have the security you have the security apparatus of mission. The east is heavily is heavily militarized. It's heavily militarized. You travel to the east, and then it's giving the is is same black and dash. All right, uh, let's stay with um, the Punch newspaper. Uh, there's a story just um, above um, the masthead. IOCs fear collapse as federal government says 1.36 trillion naira crude stolen in 14 months. How do you react, uh, GD Johnson? Well, the probe panel to probe NNPC from the from the from the fifth from the fourth um, assembly to the night we are in now. They probed NNPC. Nothing has come out of the report. Um, you remember the N N NDC CD, um, NNDC's um, um, probe. Honorable Minister dropped the mic. Nothing has come out of the report. Now you are now hearing the report that is stolen crude oil. So what what do I have to say concerning that? You always hear um, different because there are some institutions in the state that are higher than the state, like NNPC, like NDCDC. These institutions, they are institutions that even the National Assembly does not have oversight function. And when they exercise their oversight function on these agencies. NSPPC is bigger than the federal executive. We have seen so that they are stealing our crude oil. We don't have an account. They've been saying it. We have listened to different types of people in actual, in actual sense, on the issue of NNPC, we have seen that a former chairman of our appropriation committee in the House of in the National, in the House of Rep has gone to jail because of corruption that is tied that is tied that is tied to. So, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have any record. And you can, that can, you can try illness. When you begin to look at our oil and gas industry, you can run, you can, you can go, you can go, you can go, you can, you can, you can, you can invest. And I don't want to be cool mentality, like Vela said. And that's just unfortunate. Because we don't have record of how many crude the pump in the day. NNPC does not declare its account publicly. Um, they operate. They operate outside the shores of what the auditor general and their. They, no one has control over NNPC. 
That's just the truth. And no country or place like that. If, if, if you go to Saudi Arabia, if you go to Saudi Arabia, you see Aramco. Aramco's records are there in the public. Petronas record. Petronas is in Brazil. It's the oil trading company in Brazil. It's in the public domain. And people who operate in Nigeria as if we exist in isolation. As if Nigeria is Robinson Crusoe in the Committee of Nations. Stranded on an island of its own, operate within the within the sphere of its own world, as if there are no there, there are no other countries that that have similar attributes with with us. The other oil producing, do you see what we are seeing in Nigeria in Iran? Do you have that in 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 in, 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 in Russia? It is Gazprom. For Russia, it is Gazprom. For for Saudi Arabia, it is Aramco. For for Brazil, it is it is it is Petronas. Do you hear that in Iran? All right, well, uh, all right. Thank you so it is, much. It um, is the same set of people. It is the same set of people that were there during military regime. Don't forget, the president was Minister of Petroleum in 1977, and today is still the Minister of Petroleum. Why is that? I want something to change. Mm. Why is that? But I'm not expecting that you give me an answer immediately because we're at a time now. Thank you so much, G.D. Johnson, for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. And grab your popcorn and your subject and enjoy the APCR program <laughs> as you go for the national Thank you. convention. Thank you, G.D. Johnson. <laughs> we appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, G.D. Johnson. I, I like the, the popcorn and the soft drink for the national convention as though we would be watching a movie. That's as much as we can take um, on of the prayer. We'll be going back uh, this day in history and when we come back, we'll be having our first conversation for the day to join us again. <laughs>